So but before we get into the old world photographs and postcards of Quincy, Illinois, I just wanted to briefly mention uh, something I came across in my research. Quincy having an underground cave um, that is used for trucking pickups and drop-offs, apparently, which I think is interesting. I like to um, get into the underground aspect of the old world. I don't do it a lot on my channel. Um, I'd like to get a little bit further into it. Um, but so many of these cities having these underground um, networks, and they'll tell us it was from the Prohibition era or the uh, Underground Railroad, all of these things. And it really, it's quite amazing to see this infrastructure set up in so many different places across North America. Uh, this one in particular, the gentleman who posted this, I'll put the link to this in the description. He mentions here that uh, he had trouble getting around in there. He says some have never been found after getting lost in there. I don't know if that's true, but I find that interesting. It makes you wonder uh, what kind of infrastructure exists beneath the surface in this realm of ours. And uh, are we just scratching the surface, if you will? But without further ado, let's get into Quincy, Illinois. So let's begin with some geography. We can see here Quincy, Illinois, situated on the Mississippi River, surrounded by many cities that we have covered here already on the channel. Um, pretty much every major city that you see around here I've done. And I always like to bring you the population demographics. Quincy, modern day, uh, right around 40,000 people, interestingly, a very similar population at the turn of the 20th century with 36,000 and many of these structures that you're going to see having said to have been built um, right in and around the 1880 to 1900 and then a little bit further on so as you can see here not a not a large um, city by any means and if you're new to the channel and wondering what my angle on all of this is well the suggestion here is that the historical narrative that we've been given down through time is uh, is a distortion it's a timeline distortion and what we're actually seeing is uh, architectural evidence of uh, buildings that have been around longer than we are being told and often you get a, a date plastered on the front of the building um, as an attempt to uh, cement the narrative that uh, that we are being made to swallow let's say and we are trying to highlight here the discrepancy between the means we are told they had at their disposal when many of these buildings were said to have been built the problem there being the low population numbers the rudimentary technology available to them at the time you know we're being told the industrial revolution is coming in but not really revolutionizing the building process until you get into the 1900s when you get into a more hydraulics and uh, um, power um, sort of being refined the use of power being refined in the building process so we look back and we see so many of these multi-storied structures and very very ornately decorated and the suggestion here is that there is a disconnection between um, what what was actually built, when it was built, and what we are told um, they had the means to do at that time. Uh, some other problems with the narrative uh, is that we have buildings that have all but been erased down through time rather than being celebrated as architectural wonders of the day they have been almost scrubbed 
from our memory banks and you'll, you'll see that as we move forward especially with the courthouse here in Quincy here's a street scene uh, another th aspect of the old world suggestion being that uh, this technology was around uh, much longer than we've been told are the uh, streetcars or tram lines which you find in uh, every city that we look into here on this channel and again you can see the uh, massive aspect of uh, the buildings and also the churches you see one in the background here they're going to see some spectacular churches this is not something we do in the modern day and um, the naysayer will say this just just not how we build anymore it's a style thing uh, the suggestion here on this channel being it's much more than a style thing but in fact a uh, from a different uh, consciousness of society I, I guess that's how I'd like to put that yes and the suggestion being that uh, our consciousness has been shifted away from um, the existence uh, that we were once in that produced so much of this architecture and much of the technology has been hidden from us and it's no mystery really that technology has been hidden from us uh, anyone who knows anything about the intelligence agencies know they uh, hide patents keep patents from the people and get into the old Tesla Edison um, wars for electricity back in the uh, robber baron days the robber baron days factor heavily into what we're looking at here this is part of that brewery I just showed you here's another shot from a side street uh, and we I think it's very important for us to understand um, the robber baron story in North America to get a really good grasp of, of where we're at today this we are being told are, are the brewers responsible for this construction here apparently massive complexes low populations um, real disconnect between what what we should be believing was possible at the time you can see how rudimentary the cart behind them are is sorry um, so there's just so many things that don't add up looks like we have some damage or demolition here as well and so we are questioning the narrative here on this channel and um, the main way I like to do that is by bringing you the visual evidence and of course letting you decide for yourself so if you are new here don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more videos and give these videos a thumbs up as you're watching them it's easy to forget that um, it helps get this content out into the algorithms this the gem city business college interesting looking structure I tried to find um, a photograph of this but I could find nothing interesting you get the arched entry down here um, nice looking building would love to have had a uh, crisper photograph of that one I see this a lot too in my research um, when I dive into the cities they often have their own bank notes um, whether it be the local bank or the county bank or whatever it might be this thing 1873 here very early time period uh, right after the American Civil War which I have suggested was uh, certainly not as we have been told but in fact uh, a trigger event that uh, um, hastened the hard reset of North America that's when you get the onset of the uh, world's fairs and the reshaping of the narrative you get the Royal Society folks pushing their ideas of the cosmos and, and of biology and all the rest of it this is funny I wanted to include this just to show you how silly some of these postcards are they almost seem to be obscuring the architecture see that quite often as well and I thought I would include some of these uh, advertisement style postcards from the past selling uh, a stove it looks like and because of its proximity on the Mississippi River um, you've got a large steamboat narrative attached to the uh, of to Quincy and this is something I haven't talked a lot about on my channel but um, much like the trams and the streets the suggestion here is that these steamboats were a uh, part of the old world technology that was heavily in use um, many of them very very beautifully decorated um, 
and the possibility here is that the steam technology as we know it was modified and uh, previously these would have run on a much cleaner um, source of energy of course it's all speculation basing based off the assumption that there are technologies in energy production that we are not aware of. So if you decide that you are aware of all the possible technologies that have ever existed and that's what we have been given and there's no funny business, you go right ahead and have that opinion. I, choose, I beg to differ. And I think you can ask any contractor in the modern day. And of course, if you were in the building trades, I always like to hear from you in the comments section on what you believe should have been possible at that time. If you ask anybody to try to reproduce these ornate styles of buildings, they will tell you the difficulties and the timelines that uh, are likely to be faced when attempting to build those. Yet we have uh, often very short build build timelines and uh, um, very, very, very ornate and elaborate um, interiors and exteriors. Um, I, I save this one just to give you a sense of the streetcars. Can you envision that old world with the brick paved streets and the tram lines running up and down all of these streets? Um, there's definitely a bit of a romantic um, feel to the old world that we can get a fleeting sense of as we dive into the visual um, remains of the past. Much of this technology, again, looking old. And even just pointing out some of the minor um, details is like the, the baying of this window complex in each position here. The uh, addition of the circular windows and the balconies, all of these things are um, very frivolous uh, and difficult to envision uh, having been completed in the 1890s, where they'll say this one was built, um, according to the narrative that we've been given. So I'm not saying these buildings don't exist. I've had people ask, what are you trying to say? Are these buildings not real? Certainly not at all what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that there's a problem with the timeline. And part of that problem comes with the destruction of uh, many of these amazing structures getting destroyed by things like fire, which is an absolute ridiculous uh, ridiculous thing to suggest a stone or brick building is has been destroyed by fire. Here we are looking at the Chattuck Boys School. And another theme that seems to repeat itself with this old world research has to do with the early um, schools, boarding schools, um, orphanages, and so many massive structures used to house the uh, young generations at the time, and of course to program a specific reality into them. And I have done enough videos now to notice the patterns arising with the architecture, how you see so many of these cities almost like being carbon copies of each other as far as the types of buildings that have been built and the designations of each building. It's an interesting uh, thing to watch as I go through my research, just the similarities, the amount of, for instance, the amount of ch Presbyterian churches that w would or should have been built at that time is, uh, is absolutely staggering when you put it all together and then you have to factor in the resources that the church should have had at the time. Um, and it, it, the more research you do, the, the less believable it all becomes. Same church, you can see how some of this has been neutered or detechified, as I have said. They've taken off the balls here at the top and the decorations up here and muted a lot of the uh, features. So although many of them do stand, a lot of them have been muted, for lack of a better word. I will say this though, those Quincy Presbyterians certainly knew what they were doing in, in the church building end of things. Unfortunately, this one was destroyed in the 1945 tornado, which we'll be taking a closer look at as we move forward. Here is a photograph of the remains of this church. 
So they detechified it and eventually they get rid of it altogether. Certainly not looking like it's less than a 50 year old building, 60 year old building. This looks like it could easily be a hundred or several hundred years old. But maybe that's just me. Quite a few churches as, as mentioned. This is also another spectacular looking structure. The Vermont Street Methodist Episcopal. Some of it looking like a drawing, as you can see down here. And to my knowledge, this one no longer stands. This is the Salem Lutheran United. Of course, it does still stand. So try to picture this city of less than 40,000 people um, shooting up churches all over the place. And not just any old box with a with an open area. Uh, we're talking about highly, highly decorated churches. This is St. Francis Solanus Church. Take a look at the roof. Looking like slate. Spectacular work. How many brickies did they have in Quincy, Illinois? So just a quick look at the interior of St. Francis there. The suggestion here is Old World and the uh, suggestion is also that uh, not originally um, built for the purposes of um, worship in, in the manner that we uh, um, do today. I think that's a new world invention, um, the way that we worship in these churches. A lot of it uh, has been laid out for us. And that they actually had a different purpose and the cymatics had a lot to do with it meaning the sound that they were able to produce with the bells and with the pipe organs was able to emanate out into the communities and uh, was a part of the harmonics and healing of that area and they were strategically positioned for that reason is, is my suggestion saint mary's catholic church yet another church we have a hospital connected to St. Mary's. A lot of them, of course, uh, postcard, meaning I had trouble finding um, photographs. I did find one of this one. But, so the, the always the need for a mansard floor, like one, two, three, four floors wasn't enough. When they designed this, they had to have that fifth floor and they had to incorporate that as part of the roof. You can see the slate patterning style going on here too. Very difficult to accomplish this type of uh, architecture in the construction process. This also we have the academy. So again one of those buildings purposed for educating the youth. And here's here's a look at what it looks like in the modern day. So let me jump back over just to show you what they do to these. So the steep, steep, steep portion has been removed and replaced with a very flat roof. Still an lo amazing looking church, but taking a little bit of that flare off. Just enough to possibly hide um, the splendor. Enough to justify potentially a demolition eventually. This is St. Peter's Church. No shortage of churches in Quincy. A devout people. We have the city hall looking crenellated, looking like it could easily have been a um, armory. Crenellations being the uh, styling you see up here, but we find in this other photograph that was not always the case. Now I suspect 1905 we're predating what we're looking at here. And this was a modification and a flattening of the roof line where once it looked like this nice eyebrow dormer here on the top and again this is something that we see um, often as we look at the old world architecture now let us continue a little look at the college modern day college uh, originally built i think by the franciscans of course those franciscan monks knew how to lay a brick or two um, clearly to me looking like the, some sort of peak has been removed from this tower as well. But that would have been a while ago, so you have this. Interesting, you have a receiver tower on there in this one. So something along those lines. Beautiful brickwork, timeless brickwork. Uh, looking impeccable. 
All right, we come to the courthouse story in Quincy, Illinois. Now this is one of those classic postcards I often come across in my research giving you a progression of the courthouses in Quincy. Quite interesting when you think about the progress from this one to this one to this one. Um, this is one of those stories that I have a real problem with in historical narrative when I see this off quite often as well. If you take a look at this building, you would think if this building existed in your town, first of all, you would think you would do everything you could to restore it after it gets damaged. And second of all, you would think that this would be absolutely celebrated, um, that many pictures of the interior would be available, um, many pictures of the exterior, uh, and it would be celebrated in all the schools, and it would be plastered over all the parks. You just think that this would be something the city would want you to know about when you came to Quincy. And the problem I have with that is I'm showing you the handful of photos that I was able to even find um, that give us a visual of this building. So they're saying that this is the second one, built in 1837, destroyed by fire 1875. Um, interesting. So this is the second one. It's telling us it's 1876. And they're saying that this one was destroyed by fire. So we've got some timeline issues here. We've look at, uh, when we look at the Wikipedia, what they say about the courthouses. So you saw those three, right? The structure was a square log building and it completed in 1826. And it was destroyed by fire in, 10 years later. <laughs> a new brick courthouse was begun, but it too fell prey to fire in 1876. That's the one we're seeing here. So, interestingly, they don't actually tell us when the, the second one was begun was begun like that. Um, the third one that we have been oogling here apparently was completed and occupied in 1877. So second one burns down in 1875, completed occupied 1877. There's a two-year window to develop the, pro the, the land, to design the building, to construct the entire thing, finish all the interiors, and move in. Two-year window. Do you see the problem with the narrative, those of you out there that are new to this? Does this not make sense to you? It doesn't make any sense to me that you could accomplish a building like this. And again, 1877. In the 1870s. This is just after the American Civil War. And you're going to tell me that they, they threw this thing up in less than two years in the 1870s? No wonder they don't want you to know about it. And what happened to it? Well, here we're looking at the 1945 tornado in Quincy, and we have a list here of some of the buildings that were um, destroyed or damaged, and we also have a martial law area, uh, a section of the city apparently that was under martial law. Now we're going to look through some of the damaged um, buildings that have been provided to us, some of the photographs. This is apparently the courthouse. Uh, suffering damage. Apparently, the entire roof blew off in a tornado. So, you believe? Have you believe that? 1945 doesn't doesn't sit right with me. Seems like they're trying to get rid of this thing. And there isn't really much documentation available online to dig any deeper on that. So, you've got all sorts of tornado damage. Apparently, tornado is not. Uh, not typical in this region as well, so that's also suspicious. There's that second courthouse again. Even that one, to think that building this kind of thing in the 1830s is laughable, according to the narrative we've been told. They're all dying of cholera and fighting in wars, and there's nobody there in the 1830s anyway, as we're told, anyway. So a real problem is gaping holes in the narrative. Uh, this is the type of transportation that we expect to see. Even these two side by side, the uh, streetcar and the horse and buggy, rickety um, horse and buggy, are comical when you really put it together. 
Here we're getting another narrative re repetition. The Quincy House, built in 1838, destroyed by fire in 1883, it looks like. That's also interesting because we had the first courthouse being built in 1860. So you've got this structure being built and you've got the courthouse being built within a two year time period of each other at a time when well, we don't even know the population of Quincy and because the census begins in 1840 at 2,300 people. So you tell me if a town of 2,000 people has the capacity to build this. I say no, not even close. Um, Hotel Newcomb. Here we have the replacement, we will be told. Uh, and that's what the fire narrative um, provides with the false historical timeline is a, a false start for these magnificent looking structures. Rather than us being able to su suggest they're older, we are being told this one was built after the last one burnt down, so it had to be built within a time period that we've been given. Very, uh, Nice looking structure with a really spectacular looking dome. Built this in the 1880s. This is also interesting as well. This uh, power pole here. Interesting shapes to it. Here, let's. I just wanted to get in a little closer for those of you that are interested. Because I've seen a lot of what they're called telegraph poles and things like that, but this is a unique shape for me in my research. Oh, but moving right along, we have Hotel Quincy. We have a nice looking junior high school. You can see here. Interesting because you're getting a bit of this cathedral esque gothic styling, which uh, seems quite over the top for a, uh, a school. The budgets were just that uh, beefy. They were so in the black that they were able to build like this. I don't know. I've got my doubts. I think there's much more to the story. Much more to our past than what we are being told. Public library. Looking like a little castle. They kept the dome on this one. Still stands. Impeccable stonework. Um, ornamentation. Not really, not too over the top, but it still uh, screams old world at us. And of course, the usual suspects are always involved. Uh, you can see this one still stands, actually. No surprises there. What do you think that is? Bat owl? Anyway, the Mercantile Building, which we did take a peek at earlier on. And still stands in this again this modern day photograph giving us a sense of how uh, perfect the brickwork on this structure really is and of course the uh, ornamentation very 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 high quality of construction going on here certainly not something we duplicate here in the modern day and another feature of the old world that may surprise you the opera house narrative this one, the Doors Opera House, you can see it here, not a great photograph. Um, often these old opera houses are difficult to find in the research. Uh, you can see here, you can just barely make out that slight style roofing at the top here. This is the opera house here on the right. Very, very ornate looking structure. And then we'll, we're told this was built in 1868 and that the opera house was only the upper floor in this structure. Uh, and apparently fire took it in the 90s. Destroyed by fire in the 90s. And in the 1860s, um, Quincy having about 20,000 people living there, but apparently that's enough to, right after the American Civil War, to build an opera house. Must be all those Germans. All right, continuing our journey, we have a post office, no slopes for small city, there's a postcard look at it. Horse and buggies and multi-storied stone buildings, mansard roofs, stormers, spectacular. Looking like it's not far from the wrecking ball here in the modern day. Probably can't even maintain it. They probably don't even have the manpower. This is also giving us a nice view of the um, mud flood aspect of the narrative where these buildings go much deeper and they put these grates there to allow these windows to continue further along. 
quite a large soldier's home in Quincy. Uh, they say one of the first, if not the first, in Illinois soldier's home after the Civil War. Of course, after the traumatic events of the Civil War, they needed to build these soldier's homes to house the uh, people that went through that battle. What was that battle really like, I wonder? What was it like? Interesting looking structure. All sorts of brick structures. We have the columns. No need for that. But they did it anyway. I have a few more modern photographs just to give you a sense of that uh, high quality stonework going on on this structure. Of course they're going to put this on the corner because it's just so easy to do. That's classic old world architecture. And not far at the South Park in town we have a massive stone bridge as well. All architecture and infrastructure that uh, would be a tall order according to the narrative we're given. Okay, St. Francis School. I'm getting to the end of the file here now. And I thought these two were the same, but I don't think they are. Some changes to the tower here. Not sure. Seems to be a lot of steeples going on here in Quincy. So I'll just throw them in there and you can tell me. If you're local, you can always, of course, add your perspective. You know a lot more about Quincy than I do. I'm not claiming to be an expert on any of these locations. This is the straight State Street Bank. You can see again the... Well, you can see the slope going on here, and you can see the lower windows. Found some interesting postcards. Postcards. 1909. Oh, very grainy photo of the Temple Benai. Uh, and I wanted to include it because I found an old photo of it with um, much more decoration on top. You can see again where the, this building cuts it off. Here, there used to be... It's very, very tall, steeple-looking um, additions to the two towers on the corner. So, again, classic old-world detectification. They'll say that was from the tornado, probably. I'm d I don't know. I'm just, just, I'm just guessing on that one. We have a couple major um, rail depots here, uh, and I couldn't find any photographs of this one either. And I'm not sure if, it, if I found this building either on the left with the dome. So much seems to be hidden in that wonderful looking slate style roof. Beautiful looking structure. Old world is the suggestion here. Here's the other train station, the Wabash Wabash station. And you can see again the brick pavers and the uh, the dome. Why put an onion dome on the top there? And another steeple in the background. And we typically finish with a YMCA, and uh, the Quincy YMCA does not disappoint. Nice looking structure. They actually had, they called it the Labor Temple for a while. And I guess they switched it over to the YMCA. There was another one as well, so two YMCAs. But anyway, this has been a look at Quincy, Illinois. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe, and until next time. This has been an old world exploration. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, and comment. I believe we are in the process of remembering who we really are, and casting off the shackles of illusion. Until next time.